Okay everyone, today I'm going to be testing out the world's whitest paint, white 2.0. And I'm going to be comparing it to the world's whitest material called Spectralon. Now white 2.0 comes from the same company of the people who made black 2.0 and black 3.0. Now these, if you remember, are the world's blackest paint, almost comparable to Vanta Black, which is the blackest material. So what it means to call something white means that it's diffusively reflecting all of the colors that hit it. And so we're talking about the visual spectrum here, so what that would mean is that any color that hits it is going to be reflected back. Now the difference between the color white and a mirror is that the white things diffusively reflect back, but a mirror reflectively reflects it back. And so a mirror preserves the angle of incidence, it hits at this angle and comes off at the same angle. But a color white doesn't preserve that angle, it can shoot off at any angle. And so you don't see an image, you just see the color white. Okay, so first let's pour some of this out and see how white it looks. Whoa, look at that. So that is pretty pasty white if you ask me. Okay, so first let's see what it looks like if I actually paint something with white 2.0. So I 3D printed my daughter this pink unicorn here, but she wants it white, so I told her I'd paint it white for her. And when I say white, I mean white. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so here is my white unicorn now. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So when I painted things with black 3.0, you weren't able to see the contours. That's because in order to see contours, you have to be able to see less light in certain places. So wherever there's a shadow, you're seeing less light there. But with black 3.0, because it's so close to zero reflected light in any location, whether it's a shadow or not, everything just looks the same. But with white 2.0 here, that's not the case. Even though it reflects a lot of light, in the shadow area, it's reflecting less light still. So even though it reflects a high amount of light, no matter what, if you subtract a little bit of that light, you can easily notice it. So first I'm going to be painting it on this black paper here and we'll compare it to several things that we think of as white. And then I'll compare it to Spectralon, which is actually the world's whitest material. So let's see how it stacks up against the true world's whitest. Okay, for the first test, let's compare to a white paper now. Well, look how much whiter that one looks. So this could be just because of the black background kind of coming through the white paper. So let's add a few more papers behind it to not let it bleed through. Okay, here's a stack of white papers. So which one actually looks more white? So look how much whiter that one looks. It almost gives this one kind of a gray tint to it. It's amazing. That's amazing, much better than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be kind of similar to just kind of this white matte paint, but this is actually looking really good. Okay, for the final test here, let's compare to Spectralon. <laughs> so I think the white paint loses out to Spectralon here. So this definitely looks whiter than this. So there you go, this Spectralon is pretty cool. It reflects over 99% of visible light. And it looks like this white paint is pretty close to it actually. Now to continue our comparison even more, I'm going to test across the entire visible spectrum to see how the white 2.0 compares to Spectralon with different wavelengths of light hitting it. True white should reflect all wavelengths equally in order to keep it white looking. If you reflect one wavelength better than another, then it's not going to look white. It's going to look that color that reflected better. So we know that Spectralon has the best reflection you can expect across the entire visible spectrum. So I'm gonna compare Spectralon to white 2.0 as I change the colors of light, and let's see if the comparison between them stays the same. So I have a light here that I can change different colors. I can set it to blue, magenta, red, yellow, green. So I can set it to any wavelength I want. So let's see what it looks like compared to Spectralon. 
Okay, let's just go around the color wheel here. So we're gonna start at red, the longest wavelength of light. So they're actually pretty well compared here. This one might go to the white paint actually. That's interesting. I don't know if you can tell on camera as well, but it looks like the white paint is actually reflecting a little brighter than the Spectralon. The Spectralon looks a little dimmer here. Let's go to yellow. So we're shortening our wavelength here, increasing our frequency, increase even more. Let's go to green. Then let's get to the blue spectrum here. And here's blue. So blue, I think that Spectralon might win in this case. They're very comparable though across the different colors. It's hard to tell a difference. So in the end, I think the Spectralon beat the white 2.0 in terms of whiteness. We have to remember in my color test that I just did here, I wasn't actually using the true wavelength of light that you were seeing. It was a combination of red, green, and blue lights, and when they combine together, they make the light that you see. So what you would really see is instead of one of them getting dimmer or brighter at a certain color, you would see it slightly change color a little bit because it was absorbing one of those wavelengths a little bit more, the red, green, or blue. If you could shine the true wavelengths of the entire visible spectrum on them using, for say, a laser, then you would be able to see one of them being dimmer or brighter. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. And you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest videos. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.